Hello everyone, let's talk about finding the general antiderivative of the function of the form e to the ax where a is not equal to zero. Because if a is equal to zero, this is not an exponential function anymore. Zero times x is zero and then e to the zero is one. So we are finding the general antiderivative of a constant function. And now when a is not equal to zero, what can we do? What can we do to find the antiderivative of this? Uh, exponential function here. So in general, I would say that if we have a linear expression right here, and as you can see, that's a linear expression, right? Because x is raised to the first power, and we can find the general antiderivative easily. And all we need to worry about is to reverse the chain rule. And then some people will say that, okay, so to reverse the chain rule, shouldn't we be using the u substitution method to do that? Um, yes, but for gen, uh, for uh, simple functions like this, then we actually don't need to do that. Okay, so let's think about how this works. And we are going to do some scratch work. Let me just write something on the side here. So let's do some scratch work. So now let's say we have y equals e to the 2x, okay? In this case, a is equal to 2. But remember that we are... Um, here we are finding the general antiderivative, but let's just try to take the derivative of e to the 2x and see what's going on. So if I take the derivative of y equals e to the 2x, we have y prime, and that's equal to e to the what 2x, and then due to the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the 2x, which is just 2, because 2x is a linear function. So we are just going to get a constant. When we differentiate that linear function, then we are going to get what? 2e to the 2x. Let's try another one here. Let's pick a different number, e to the, um, let's say, um, 5x. Okay. And then what do we get here? y prime is equal to e to the 5x. And then times, what do we get here? 5, right? That's the derivative of 5x. And then we are getting what? 5 times e to the 5x. And actually, those two expressions are really just the same, right? I'm just, just moving the phi as in the front so that it will, it will look better. Yeah. And let's try a negative exponent here. Um, what is a good one that we can pick? Negative 3x. Okay. So let's see what's going on here. Y prime is going to be equal to, what is that? That's e to the negative 3x and then times negative 3. And in this case, we can have negative three e to the five, um, no, not phi x, I was just going to copy from here, but that's not correct, right? So it should be negative three x. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's try a fraction in front of the x. Let's say we have e to the um, four, over, uh, four over seven x, okay? And then when we differentiate, we get y prime is equal to, what is that? That's going to be e to the 4 over 7x, and then times what, 4 over 7? And so we have 4 over 7, e to the 4 over 7x. Do you see the pattern here? Because we did like four problems right here. And then it's really just what? When we differentiate e to some number times x, we are actually going to get that number in the front as the coefficient of that exponential function. Like if the, the exponent is 2x, then we get a two in the front. If the exponent is 5x, then we are gonna get a five in the front. And then if the exponent is negative 3x, then we are going to get negative three in the front. And even if it's a fraction, four over seven, in front of the x, then we are going to get four over seven in front of the whole function. So now the question is, if we do not, have any number, well, we assume that's in that case, that will be a one, right? In front of the e function, in front of the exponential function, what happens? So we gotta go backward. And I think I need more space for the scratch work. So let me just move this a little bit here. Okay, so now let's just think about what's actually happening here. So let's go backward. Let's say we have our y prime to be, um, Let's just pick something right here. Uh, what is a good number to pick? Like 4x, right? we, didn't, we didn't use a four, so let's just use the 4x right here. 
We got two, three, and five, right? So let's just do the four. Okay, now if we are going backward. Okay. So we know that the exponent doesn't change when we differentiate. You see what's going on here? e to the 2x, and then e to the 2x, e to the 5x, e to the 5x, right? e to the negative 3x, and e to the negative 3x. Do you see that every time we differentiate the exponential function, we are still going to get the exponential function and then with some number that we have in the front, right? And so now when we go backward, when we find the original function from the y prime, we actually are still going to get something that's involving the e to the 4x. But the problem is if we just write y as e to the 4x, when we differentiate, we are going to get a 4 in the front. But then, because we don't really have a 4 here, so that's the problem. So how do we get rid of that 4, right? Because let's just think about this. If y is equal to e to the 4x, then we are going to get what? We are going to get 4 times e to the 4x. So to get rid of the 4 that we are going to get due to the chain rule, we need to multiply by what? 1 over 4 so that we can get 1 over 4 and then cancel with this 4 here. So that means we are going to get what? 1 over 4. And then of course we got to um, do a little bit of the checking, right? As you can see here. So we should really do a little bit of the checking. Then I will just need more space right here, but I'm going to do the checking here. So let's say we differentiate this one and then we see if we are getting e to the 4x. Okay, so now let's take the derivative of 1 over 4 and then e to the 4x. And so we all know that due to the constant multiple rule for differentiation, we actually don't need to worry about the 1 over 4. So we're actually taking the derivative of e to the 4x. And from there, we still have that blue 1 over 4. And then for the derivative of e to the 4x, we are going to get 4e to the 4x. That's what we have been doing up there, right? When we see the pattern. And so do you see what's going on here? That 4 is going to cancel out with this 1 over 4. And so that we're getting this e to the 4x. So the 4 we we'll get that, and then so, that means they're now equal. So now, this actually gives us the idea of reversing that chain rule, this extra 4 that we are going to get when we take the derivative of the exponential function. What do we need to do here? We need to multiply by something that can cancel out the number that's in front of the, the x. What do we need to multiply? We need to multiply by the reciprocal whatever number that you have here so that we can cancel with this number. Is that okay? So if that's a 4, then we multiply by 1 over 4 so that we can cancel the, one over, the 4 with the 1 over 4. So whatever number that we have here, we multiply in the front by the reciprocal of that number. And then we can actually verify by doing some examples later. But right now, I'm going to write down the general uh, nt derivative for this function in the general form because a is not specified, right? Except that we have a condition that a cannot be equal to 0. OK, so let's write down the result. So the nt derivative for f, we usually use capital F to denote that. And that would be what? e to the ax, we are going to get back the original function. And then what do we need to do? Due to the chain rule, we are going to be multiplying by a. To cancel that, to cancel out that a, we need to multiply by the reciprocal of the a. And so that's 1 over a. And then, of course, we can have a constant. And so that's the general antiderivative for e to the ax.
Is that good for this formula right here? Okay, now let's do a few examples and see what's going on. I'm going to erase all this scratch work right here because we don't need them anymore. So I'm going to show a few short examples on here and see what's going on. So first example. So let's say our function is e to the, let's say negative three x. Okay, so what is its nt derivative? It's going to be what? According to the formula, right? We're, it's actually quite easy. We just copy the function first. Okay, so we are just going to copy the function, which is e to the negative three x. And then we need to multiply by the reciprocal of whatever a that you have in front of the x. Now, the a is negative three. So when we multiply by its reciprocal, then we are multiplying by negative one over three, and then plus the constant. Easy, right? Let's try a few more so that you will get used to this idea here. So another one, let's say f is what? Is e to the, let's try a fraction this time. Um, how about three over 10 x? That's like 0.3, right? And it's antiderivative would be just copy down the function now. Then what do we get in the front? We need to multiply by the reciprocal of the three over 10. So we are going to get 10 over three. That's the reciprocal and then plus C. See, that's quite easy, right? Let's just try one more and then we'll have, um, let's try, uh, let me see. So how about e to the phi x minus two? Now this one is a little bit different. That's not even in the same form as e to the ax here, because even though that's still a linear function, but we have an extra minus two in there. And then you may say, what do we do with that extra minus two? It actually doesn't really matter, but I will show you all the details on how to find the antiderivative with this one. And then eventually you can, uh, the result is actually uh, quite straightforward. It's almost the same thing as the formula that we have right here. So now we can actually, break this down using um, the rules for exponents, right? You can break it as e to the phi x times e to the negative two. And so do you realize that this e to the negative two, it's really just a constant? Okay, so that's really just a constant. And so, When we try to find the antiderivative, what do we do? We do not really need to worry about that constant because when we take the derivative, when we use the constant multiple rule, we actually just move the constant in the front and then we don't worry about it, right? We just differentiate the function. So in this case, if we are going backward, we actually do not need to worry about this constant here. We only need to focus on, um, finding the general antiderivative for e to the phi x, and then eventually we we'll multiply it by this constant, and then we can get the general antiderivative for e to the phi x minus two. Okay, so let's find the antiderivative for e to the phi x, which is in the same form as e to the ax right here, so that would be easy. So finding that, then we are going to get what? We have um, e to the phi x, okay? And then we multiply by, the reciprocal of the five, which is one over five. And then now that constant, we just need to multiply it right here, right? We didn't touch it. So it's e to the negative two. And then we have, of course, we have the plus c right here, but then according to the rules of exponents, we actually can put this back together. So we have one over five. And then e to the, what What do we get here? We have e to the phi x minus two and then plus the constant. Do you see what actually is happening here? Um, if we just ignore all the steps in, in uh, the, if we just ignore all the intermediate steps, let's think about 
the original function, and our final answer. Do you see that we still just have the original function, except that now in the front, we multiply by the reciprocal of whatever coefficient that we have for the x. And so this minus 2 here does not really change how we deal with the antiderivative of e to the ax. It's really just there. And when you do that, you just keep it there, but then it doesn't affect the number that we have in the front. So we still have that 1 over a in the front. And so from there, we can actually extend um, that formula to a more general formula, even more general than this one. We can actually say that, OK, so so we can say the general. Antiderivative of what? <clears throat> of let's say e to the ax plus b, where a is not equal to zero, is going to be what? It's going to be one over a, okay, and then e to the ax plus b, where both a and b are real numbers but a cannot be zero, okay? So as you can see right here, and for this green example right here, the b is negative two, and then it doesn't really um, affect whatever that we multiply in the front. So it's still just one over a, which is the reciprocal of the number in front of the x. Okay, so that's it for um, this problem. And so this result can be uh, memorized, and that will just make finding the antiderivatives for exponential functions quite easily, okay? Yeah. Now, if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. And then please also check out my other math videos and leave me some comments. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.